Oh my god, it's gonna be so hard not to look at myself. Hi, cutie. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Spencer here. So I know that I've been like gone from the YouTube lifestyle for a really long time, but I thought I would come back because you know we're in a uh, we're in quarantine or whatever, and we have a lot of time on our hands. Um. So I thought, why not? Why not jump back into the YouTube realm? And why not jump back into the realm to talk about something that I'm very passionate about? So this YouTube video, I was about to say this week's YouTube video. Hmm, maybe this will be a weekly thing, but this week's, ah, I keep saying it. This YouTube video is about my love for Nicki Minaj. So. If you've been following me on social medias, that's Instagram and Twitter, or even TikTok, you would know that I am a stout and devout fan of the Church of Nicki Minaj, and that's with due reason. Um, and I think some people think that I love Nicki Minaj for the bit of it all, like just for the bit, which is definitely a good bit, but that is not the case. Um, and I want to prove my love for Nicki Minaj through this video so that the barbs can like welcome me in. Um, I claim myself as a barb and I think I do a pretty good job at being a barb, but you know, there's definitely fans who are like more of a fan of Nicki than I am. Just kidding. I take that back. Let me, let me snatch it out of the air. I take it back. There is not a fan who is a barb who's a bigger barb than I am. Um, and here's why I'm gonna be talking about my love for Nicki Minaj throughout this entire video, but basically explaining why I love Nicki Minaj because she's the queen of rap, like period. And she deserves respect on her name. Um, and if you don't think she's the queen of rap, then just click out of this video because you're not gonna enjoy my high praises. So anyways, it all started when I was young and in middle school and I was clicking through YouTube and I saw this YouTube video called Bedrock by Young Money and I was like, hmm, what does this mean? And so I watched the video. It's all good. It's all fun. There's a bunch of rappers. It's a good song, but everything for me just pauses when this woman gets on the screen. And her verse left me shaking, especially when she says, Okay, it's time to put this pussy on your sideburns. He damn bad, he probably right, he pushing me like button downs on a Friday night. <laughs> so, that was like the beginning of my love for Nicki Minaj. Um, but that wasn't really like when I entered the barbs. So, after Nicki Minaj enters Young Money, she gets signed to Lil Wayne's record label and that's her, Lil Wayne, and Drake, they take on the rap industry for the next 10 years. Nicki Minaj's blow up was in 2010 when she had Pink Friday. Super bass. I'm sure every single one of you watching this video, Barb or not, can rap super bass, super bass, can rap super bass word for word. So, you know that Nicki Minaj is iconic. Everyone in the world knows super bass and knows it word for word. I don't care what kind of music you listen to, you can rap super bass. And I feel like that's a testament to Nicki Minaj's iconry immediately setting the tone in 2010. Also, keep in mind, during the time of her debut, there were not female rappers holding it down like Nicki. You can say all you want about, oh, Lil' Kim paved the path for female rappers. Yeah, Lil' Kim, Lil Kim paved the path. Miss Lauren Hill paved the path. Missy Elliott paved the path. They paved the path, okay? They paved the path for Nicki, I won't deny that. But where was Missy Elliott? Where was Miss Lauren Hill? Where was Lil' Kim in 2010 when Nicki's holding it down for all the girlies, all the gays and the girlies in the rap industry? That's right, you can't answer. So anyways, Nicki Minaj has her debut, fantastic. She had Eminem on the first album. Um, I'm not a fan of Eminem, but Nicki really loves to flex that, and as a barb, I must use that as a point. So she had Eminem on the first album. Name another rapper that had Eminem on the first album. You can't, because Nicki Minaj did it. Anyways, so 
She does her thing, she's an icon, she's holding it down. The next couple years, Pink Friday, uh, Roman Reloaded, and The Pink Print, all fantastic and critically acclaimed albums, all right? And I mean, I'm still a fan of Nicki Minaj at this point, but I haven't really entered Barb territory to the point where I will like fight for this woman and fight for her credentials. So when the whole Barb thing happens is actually, funnily enough, when Cardi B makes her debut into the, um, into the rap industry, which like, did Cardi B make a debut into the rap industry? Yes, she had Bodak Yellow. And so now you're really gonna get the tea as to why you should also, you, the viewer, should also be standing Nicki Minaj because this shit is about to rock your world. Once you learn about all of this, you're gonna be like, wow, Nicki's been done so dirty. We need to get this queen everything. Nicki Minaj has never received a Billboard number one hit single. I know that that might be crazy to hear considering how influential she is on the rap industry. She has never gotten a Billboard number one. The first time where she got the closest was when Anaconda released in August. So Anaconda releases and Anaconda comes out with a video. That video has the record for most views in a day. Anaconda, right? And so she releases this video on Friday. The way Billboard works, I'm pretty sure it resets on Tuesday. Don't come for me. But Anaconda comes out and everyone's like, wow, Nikki just broke the internet. She is en route to get that number one. Then Taylor Swift, two days later, releases the Shake It Off song and music video. And can you guess who got the Billboard number one that week? It was Taylor Swift, Anaconda at number two. So Nikki's been robbed of a Billboard number one hit for a while. And I enjoy Taylor's music. I enjoy 1989, I love that era. But Shake It Off is not on the level of iconery as Anaconda. And so Nicki Minaj is scalped from the Billboard. Fucked up. She's still yearning. She still has that desire, that fire, that drive to get her the Billboard number one. But she's on a hiatus. She really wants a pregnancy. Nicki Minaj has wanted a child for a really long time. You may not know that if you're not a real fan, but the Barb's know Nicki Minaj has wanted a baby for a really long time. And so she releases the pink print, really goes for it for Anaconda, does not get the billboard number one, says, hmm, maybe I'll take time off to get a baby. And so she's doing her thing, whatever. Then Cardi B enters the scene, releases Bodak Yellow. Bodak Yellow is on the way to go number one. And then, who is the person that's beating Cardi for the number one spot? None other than, again, the billboard fucking thief, Taylor Swift, is back at it, right? And so Cardi B's blowing up, and Taylor Swift has the billboard number one. But then, I don't know if you're remembering this, but then something happens on Twitter where people start saying, mm, maybe we should get Cardi B a billboard number one, and she would be the first female rapper to do it. And do you remember the hashtag that did that? Do you remember? It was for the culture. For the culture, we get Cardi B a number one. Where was that for the culture movement when Nicki needed the number one? Where was that when Nicki's been in the game holding down the rap game for the girlies for the past, what, seven years? And no one wants to start a for the culture movement for Nicki? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the for the culture movement was actually a plant by Atlantic Records. And so now we're entering the realm of tea. And so you're saying, Atlantic Records? Spencer, why are you bringing up Atlantic Records in an argument about Nicki? Well, if you check who's signed to Atlantic Records, you would see that Cardi B is signed to Atlantic Records. And if you check back in time, back to when Nicki Minaj was pre-signed to Lil Wayne, she was going to sign to a major record label. Do you know who that record label was? If you said Atlantic Records, then you would be right. So she was going to sign to Atlantic Records. Then Lil Wayne says, hey, join Young Money. So she leaves Atlantic Records contract to go with Young Money. And then, I don't know if you know this about the music industry, but Nicki Minaj becomes blacklisted by Atlantic Records. And so when an artist is blacklisted, this record label will do everything to prey on this artist's downfall. And so Nicki Minaj has been blacklisted by Atlantic Records ever since she's been signed to Young Money. Rappers have stepped out and said they were going to sign to Atlantic Records, but then in the contract, 
it said that you have to be willing to diss Nicki. And so that's why when Atlantic Records finally got their first female rapper, Cardi B, Cardi B steps out and disses Nicki. Cardi B also got the billboard number one that Nicki has been fighting for this entire time. So Cardi B gets the number one. Everyone's like, Oh my God, Cardi B's the new queen of rap. Nicki Minaj is staying silent this entire time. You know what? She's happy for her. She's happy for her. You get the number one, Cardi. You're not a rapper, you're a performer. You know what? Performers deserve the billboard number one every once in a while. So this is all fine, whatever. The barbs are a little upset, but it's okay. Until Motorsport. Motorsport, the song Migos, Cardi B, Nicki Minaj. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj on the same song. Who would have thought? Exactly. And so, if you hear the song, you would hear Nicki Minaj say, if Quavo the QB, I'm Nick Lombardi, all right? And so, this song comes out, breaks the internet, Nicki's verse is fire. Nicki looks amazing in the music video, thank you very much. And so, this song comes out and breaks the internet. People are like, what? Cardi B and Nicki Minaj on the same song? Yeah. And so Nicki Minaj is trying to get a baby, we've already discussed, and so she's not really doing press interviews. But you know who is doing press interviews? None other than Shardy B. And so Shardy B does a press interview after the Motorsport music video and gets asked, oh, what was it like working with Nicki Minaj? Keep in mind, Nicki Minaj held it down for the girlies for this long. So you would think, you would think Cardi would have the decency to compliment Nicki Minaj. No, 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 no. You thought the first thing that comes out of her mouth, oh, blah, 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 blah. she changed her verse. She was late to the music video shoot. Does she hear herself speak? Does she? No, she doesn't. Because if she did, she would have never said that. And so Nicki Minaj gets villainized by the internet. This entire time, everyone's saying Nicki Minaj is the villain. Nicki Minaj is the villain. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she changed her verse. Blah, 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 blah. Nicki's staying silent the entire time. Nicki hasn't said anything. She's just letting it attack her. She's just letting herself get attacked. Because you know what? She knows it's not worth it to waste your breath on some performer wannabe rapper bitch named Cardi B. And so, Cardi B comes out with this statement. It drives the fans wild. It drives the fans wild. All of the Barty gang is just saying, oh my gosh, Cardi B, new queen of rap, Nikki's canceled, she's a villain. Okay. So then four months pass by and the real story comes out. Oh, Nicki Minaj's original verse was, if Cardi, not Quavo, if Cardi the QB, then I'm Nick Lombardi. And why would she change her verse? Because Atlantic Records couldn't have Cardi B being shouted out by Nicki Minaj because Atlantic Records has had Nicki Minaj blacklisted this entire time. So Cardi goes to Offset and says, Nicki Minaj, change your verse. Change your verse, I don't want to be mentioned in Nicki Minaj's verse. And she's like, okay, bad, I guess, but like- It's a compliment. Nick Lombardi one of the best NFL coaches. If Cardi's the QB, she's Nick Lombardi. So she's like the mentor. She wasn't dissing Cardi in that line. She was literally saying, hey, look, girly, I've been doing this for a while. I could help you out. But Cardi's the one that gets mad. Oh, she changed her verse. Oh, she changed her verse. You made her change her verse. Don't act like you didn't. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. And so all of this happens. The music video, she, had, she couldn't come for the music video shoot. Her manager was busy. And in the music industry, when you're a big time artist like Nicki Minaj, you don't do things unless your manager, one, allows it, and two, is with you to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So Nicki Minaj wasn't the one that couldn't get to the music video shoot. It was her manager. And you know what? She listened to her manager like a good artist does. And so Nicki Minaj gets villainized by the entire internet for all this time until she finally drops Queen, she finally drops Chun-Li, and she says, you paint me like the bad guy, Chun-Li. Because they did. Y'all did. Anyone that's not a barb did. You know why? Because you ate up Cardi B's <laughs> fake ass the entire time when Nicki Minaj is getting bullied on the internet by her fans and y'all ate that shit up. And you know what? I'm glad you did because it really showed your true colors. And now who's winning? The barbs. Who's winning? Who's been winning? The barbs. And so that's why I love Nicki Minaj, because Nicki Minaj has survived some of the worst things that you could ever go through as an industry rapper. And she did it what? Flawlessly. She woke up like what? Flawless.
don't ever hate on Nicki Minaj. Don't ever try and say Nicki Minaj is not talented. Cardi B gets all her raps ghostwritten and you wanna come for Nicki Minaj? Don't you dare. Don't you ever be in the same room as me and even mutter Cardi B. They are not the same. They will never be the same. Cardi doesn't even write her own raps. How is she considered a rapper? She is a ghostwriter. Azealia Banks exposed it. And so that's all I gotta say. That is all I gotta say. I know this video was why I love Nicki Minaj, but it's also gotta be why you have to support Nicki Minaj, especially in the face of Barty Gang. And I'm not trying to put two women down, but I'm just trying to show a real one from a phony. And if you're rooting on a phony versus a real one, that shows a lot about your character. And so basically, that's why I love Nicki Minaj. Um, she's the queen of rap. I know that this got a little passionate at times, maybe a little heated, but when you're discussing topics that are important to you, you have to say it with your chest. And so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you want more videos, be sure to click the like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I got a lot of time on my hands, so there might be more videos in store. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you next time. Be sure to stream Say So, the remix featuring Nicki Minaj so that we as a collective can finally get Nicki Minaj her Billboard number one hit. I love you all and bye.